and she has starred in series such as Fame, The Quaid, the Quad, excuse me, The Vampire Diaries, and movies like Harlem Nights and School Days, and much of her career and life story will be featured in an upcoming special. Take a look right here. I got to New York, Spike and I ran into each other because I was at Ailey School and I think he had a girlfriend at the school and he said, you got to see my movie, um, she's got to have it. And I said, you did a movie? Amazing. Next time I see Spike, you know, he says, I'm doing another movie. You be a good wannabe, so send me your picture and resume. Well, that is a look at TV One's Uncensored on Jasmine Guy, and it premieres this Sunday. And she joins us live here in the studio with a preview. Yes. So wonderful to have you here. Forgive me, I've been a fan of yours for many years, so it's an honor to have you here this Thank morning. Thank you, I appreciate that. So let's talk about this, a t TV One's special on you. What was it like having to go back and relive everything, your career, mm. your life? It, was, it was weird, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about myself for a sustained period of time. Yeah. And I'm only telling the truth, because that's all that I can remember mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at this point in my life. Yeah. I can't finesse anything. And I realized all of the little uh, crooks and crannies you go through in your life, because people only see the result, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was reminding me of that. Oh, yeah, I remember when you know, Spike ran into me um, and said, you know, don't mess up. Give me your picture and resume. And I didn't have a resume. I was a dancer. Um, we don't always need resumes. Yeah. So it was a another element of, of the, the theater world that I didn't know about. Yeah. I didn't have a headshot, you know. So I did get that um, addressed. And I ended up auditioning for the movie, yeah. School Days, and everybody had to sing, dance, and act. So uh, there were a lot of us gypsies in there, <laughs> you know, yeah, because yeah. we were the ones that could do that. Yeah, We weren't freaking out when you said, well, can you do a monologue? Well, can you sing this song? And can you dance for four hours in this audition? But a lot of the actors that were, everybody was auditioning for it, mm -hmm. by the way. Whenever there was a black project, everybody and their mama was going because there mm -hmm. weren't that many. Yeah. yeah. You know, so whether it was the Wiz movie or right. the Cotton Club, wow, or, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So the actors were freaking out because they had to sing. The singers were freaking out because they had to dance. Yeah. And we were like, we got this, I got yeah. It all, yeah. <laughs> so you take us back to the early, early days, right? And you're kind of learning as you go and you're talking about, you know, with the headshots and all that. But you talk about also your early days as, as a dancer in New York City, which is really where you got your start. So talk about a little bit about that early time in New York City. Well, I came from Atlanta, and I had been in Atlanta Ballet. I'd studied dance in Atlanta my whole life. Um, and I already knew I wanted to dance with Alvin Ailey Company, mm -hmm. and I had to up my game. So I was just doubling up on everything, and I got a scholarship to study at the Alvin Ailey School for six weeks <coughs> over the summer, right after I graduated from high school. Mm. From there, I got into the third company, and then the second company, and while I was in the second company, I got into fame. Mm. So, you know, once I started making a paycheck, I was like, I'm a professional, <laughs> you know? Yeah, this yeah. ain't allowance. Right. It was $75 a week, but still, I was it like, it's a yeah. paycheck. And um, I never went back home, you know, but I didn't, that wasn't what I thought would, would happen, but I took that road. It was very important um, yeah. that I go to college. Of course. I did you know, not. I, was, I, watched, <laughs> I, I, mean. yeah. I did watch some of the clips, and I feel like a lot of people are going to find out things they didn't know about you. Like, you had such a great friendship with Tupac and his mom. Yeah. It was an amazing, it was a crash course in that um, when, I, when I was hanging out with Tupac, it was during that time that he got shot the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had talked to him that morning. And he said, I was in LA, and he said, you know, I'm going by the studio this afternoon and blah, blah, blah. And that's where he got shot. Wow. And um, when Jada called me to, to tell me that he got shot, um, my first response was, you know, I got to get to New York. Mm -hmm. 
Because I'm thinking I'm going to go to the hospital. Yeah. I played it out in my mind. Mm. And he wasn't even there when I got there. By then, he had already... I said, no, you don't understand. I really know him. Mm. I can go in. But he said he left in the middle of the night. He did not feel safe there. Mm. Because he knew that wasn't a random shooting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And whoever shot him is going to know where he's well, laying yeah. up, yeah. you know? Yeah. He ended up at my apartment because nobody knew we were friends or anything. He felt it, safe with you. Yeah. He felt safe, yeah. Amazing. And I got to know all of his family mm -hmm. intimately because it was a very traumatic and um, tragic time. Yeah. And they needed a safe place to be themselves, you know, mm -hmm. for him to heal and for them to heal as well. During that time, I thought, um, I'd already wanted to do a black female story of the Panther Party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt it was missing in, in our, you know, I read Angela Davis's yeah. uh, biography and Elaine's and, and um, Kathleen Cleaver, but I started talking to Afeni and I said, you know, this could be a movie. Yeah. So that's how we began. I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk to you about a different world, right? Because it was not only popular, it was important and it was impactful. Uh, and now there's a reunion kind of going on, right? We're doing a tour, a yes, tour. to um, of other HBCUs, and and um, I think we have eight so far on the okay. tour. Okay. Um, so, you know, black colleges. I think we should also add high schools because mm. okay. I think that the show is aspirational, and in that when you're in the tenth grade, you can aspire to go to a school like Hillman mm. or a school like Mission, or you know. But they really exist, and yeah. we want to encourage kids to dream about going and know that's mm -hmm. a part of our story as well. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thanks so much for stopping by and spending yes. some time with us. Wonderful to meet you. Thank awesome. you. I could listen to you talk all day. I, I know. know I talk too much. No, we no, love it. We could oh listen to you all day. Like, oh, oh, God, this is a limited you, you amount. You've got no. stories for days. I could listen <laughs> to you all your day. Stories. And you can learn more of her story from Uncensored, the special on Jasmine Guy. It airs on TV One this Sunday, March 24th. Yes. you got to check it out.